Good evening. The Florida Department of Transportation, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise, would like to welcome you to the public hearing for Point Santa Parkway Extension Connector from County Road 532 to north of I-4-429 Interchange Project Development and Environment, or PD&E study. My name is Michael Leo. I'm the Turnpike Project Manager for this project. This public hearing is for Financial Management Project Number 446-5A1-1. This environmental study has been conducted by Florida's Turnpike Enterprise in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 United States Code Section 327 and the Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022, and executed by Federal Highway Administration, or FHWA, and FDOT. This project is evaluating alternatives to extend Point Santa Parkway from County Road 532 to I-4 State Road 429 Interchange, modify the I-4 429 Interchange to, it, to accommodate the Point Siena Parkway connection, and to increase capacity of 429 from I-4 to Sinclair Road. This hearing is being held to provide you with the opportunity to comment on this project. I would like to now formally open the public hearing. Today's Tuesday, April 25th, 2023, and the time is approximately 5.30 p.m. My name is Michael Leo. I'm the Turnpike Project Manager for this project and will be moderating this public hearing. I will be supported by representatives from Florida's Turnpike and the consultant project team. At this time, we would like to recognize the federal, state, county, or city, of, city officials who registered to attend this virtual public hearing. We have Martha Santiago, Polk County Commissioner, Peggy Chaudhry, Osceola County Commissioner, Cindy Rodriguez, Senior Government Affairs Manager for the Southwest Florida Water Management District, and Tom Harrell, Osceola County Planning Commission Chairman. From, Reu from Reunion East Community Development District, we have June Wispelli, John Dryberg, and John Dryberg. From Reunion West Community Development District, we have Michael Berry, Graham Staley, and William Witcher. We also have Lita Epstein from the Point Siena Community, Devel Community Development District. Welcome to all participants. This hearing is being held to provide you with the opportunity to comment on this project. During tonight's virtual hearing, participants that requested to speak while registering for the public hearing will be called on in the order in which they regis registered following the presentation. Once your name is called, please locate the GoToWebinar control panel and click the button to unmute yourself. If you did not register to speak but would like to, you can click the raise hand feature located in the GoToWebinar control, control panel. Once again, once your name is called, please unmute yourself and make your comment. You could also submit comments through the project website and by emailing me at the address shown on the screen. Comments must be submitted by May 12, 2023 to become part of the public record. If you do not hear the audio during the presentation, please check your computer speaker settings using the control panel. If you experience technical difficulties during the virtual hearing, please contact support at TPK meeting support at dot.state.fl.us. In the event of te technical difficulties during the virtual hearing, please stay online while we work to resolve the issue. We will now begin the presentation. The Florida Department of Transportation, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise, welcomes you to the public hearing for the Point Siena Parkway Extension Connector Project Development and Environment, or PD&E study from County Road 532 in Polk County to north of the I-4 State Road 429 interchange in Osceola County. This public hearing provides multiple participation options. The virtual option is being held on Tuesday, April 25, 2023. Members of the public can participate via the GoToWebinar system or using their telephone. The in-person option is being held on Thursday, April 27, 2023 at the Adent Health Nicholson Center. The same information is being presented during both options and verbatim transcripts will be made of all oral proceedings. The public hearing video will also be posted to the project website and a link to the video will be provided by email to all persons that registered. We will follow this agenda, 
starting first with the purpose of the public hearing and how you can provide input. We will then review the preferred and no build alternatives and environmental impacts and then open the public comment period. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvements, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study, and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions and concerns regarding the project. There have been various opportunities for the public to provide input on this project. A virtual kickoff meeting was held on June 22, 2021, and an in-person public kickoff meeting was held on June 24, 2021. 44 people attended the kickoff meetings and two comments were submitted. A virtual alternatives public information meeting was held on February 22, 2022, and an in-person alternatives public information meeting was held on February 24, 2022. A total of 75 people attended the combined alternatives meetings and 31 written comments were received. Whether attending the meeting virtually or in person, you have the option to submit verbal or written comments. Every comment method carries equal weight. Comments submitted or postmarked by May 12 will become part of the official public hearing record. This public hearing was advertised consistent with federal and state requirements shown on the slide. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 United States Code Section 327 and Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022, and executed by the Federal Highway Administration, or FHWA, and FDOT. The proposed project is being developed in accordance with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Under Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise Office, or the Tallahassee Office of the Florida Department of Transportation. The study limits extend from south of County Road 532 to north of the I-4 State Road 429 interchange and includes the portion of I-4 between Exit 58 and Exit 62. The project is located within Polk and Osceola counties. This study is evaluating existing and future traffic conditions to determine the need and type of improvements. For this study, we are forecasting traffic to the design year 2050. This evaluation is identifying the best location for a new tolled highway extending Point Sienna Parkway to connect to the I-4 State Road 429 interchange, including modifications to future County Road 532 interchange, the future I-4 beyond the ultimate improvements, and modifications that may be required at Sinclair Road. Over the last 10 years, Osceola County was the fastest growing county in the state. As this chart shows, the population of Osceola County has grown by over 200,000 people over the last 20 years and is expected to grow by another 200,000 people over the next 20 years to over 600,000 people. If nothing is done, existing roadways in the study area would not be able to accommodate the expected increase in traffic. To accommodate this growth, there are several PD&E design and construction projects near this PD&E study. The most important projects relative to this study include the State Road 429 PD&E study from north of I-4 to Seidel Road and the Central Florida Expressway Authority's design project for Point Sienna Parkway from Ronald Reagan Parkway to County Road 532. Other projects include I-4 Beyond the Ultimate, widening County Road 532, and widening of Old Lake Wilson Road over I-4. These projects alone do not accommodate all of the anticipated traffic increases associated with growth in this region. Additional improvements are still needed. Project needs arise from issues and concerns that may frequently slow down traffic, cause delays, or lead to accidents. The need to extend Point Santa Parkway is based on enhancing safety, improving system linkage, accommodating travel demand through the year 2050, improving travel times and reliability, economic and employment viability, and emergency response effectiveness. Improvements to Point Sienna Parkway Extension Connector are needed to enhance safety. Between 2017 and 2022, there were 2,992 crashes along I-4 from County Road 532 to World Drive, 
and 134 crashes along State Road 429 from I-4 to Sinclair Road. Twelve fatal crashes were reported along the I-4 corridor. Three fatal crashes were reported along State Road 429 within the study limits. Between 2017 and 2022, there were 241 crashes along US 1792 and 887 crashes along County Road 532 within the study limits. Five fatal crashes were reported within the study limits along County Road 532. Of the two fatal crashes reported along US 1792, one involved a pedestrian. Congestion is a major contributing factor to crashes. If nothing is done, congestion will continue to rise, leading to an increase in crashes. The extension of Point Siena Parkway is a crucial project that will complete the missing link of a series of existing and planned roadways connecting I-4 to Florida's Turnpike and State Road 417. The extension of Point Siena Parkway is needed to accommodate future traffic demands and improve travel time reliability. These graphics will illustrate the existing travel pattern on the left and the proposed travel pattern on the right. Travelers from the south will no longer have to take County Road 532 to get to either I-4 or State Road 429, relieving the section of I-4 between County Road 532 and State Road 429. The proposed improvements create a direct connection between Point Siena Parkway, I-4, and State Road 429. The proposed improvements are expected to cut travel distances in half and reduce travel time substantially during peak periods. Currently, the Central Florida Expressway Authority, or CFX, is planning to extend the existing Point Siena Parkway on new alignment from Ronald Reagan Parkway north to County Road 532. Florida's Turnpike Enterprise's new alignment extends Point Siena Parkway from County Road 532 north to I-4. The new connection with I-4 and State Road 429 would require capacity improvements to State Road 429 between I-4 and Sinclair Road. Two alternatives were evaluated and presented at the Alternative Public Information Meeting in February 2022. Alternative 1 avoids the Florida Gas Transmission, or FGT, facility using a bifurcated or split mainline configuration to extend the Point Siena Parkway mainline north from County Road 532 to I-4. Alternative 2 avoids impacts to the FGT and Gulfstream gas facilities located adjacent to the I-4 State Road 429 interchange. Alternative 2 keeps the northbound and southbound mainline lanes adjacent to each other as they pass south of the FGT facility. The major design features of each alternative along with cost and potential impacts are available for review on the project website at www.pointianaextension.com. Based on the potential impacts to the social and economic, physical, natural, and cultural environment, along with the results of the public alternatives information meeting and ongoing coordination with stakeholders, the Florida's Turnpike Enterprise identified Alternative 2 as the preferred alternative. Between County Road 532 and the I-4 State Road 429 interchange, the Point Siena Parkway extension connector would consist of three 12-foot travel lanes in each direction with 10-foot paved shoulders. Right-of-way would have to be purchased to accommodate the new roadway. To accommodate future traffic, enough right-of-way would be purchased to allow the roadway to be widened in the future. Now we will cover the proposed interchange modifications at the future County Road 532 interchange, I-4 State Road 429 interchange, and Sinclair Road. We will start with County Road 532. This segment shows the beginning of the project at County Road 532 where CFX's segment ends and the Florida's Turnpike Enterprise segment begins. The CFX segment is designed to intersect County Road 532 at grade, but this project would remove the temporary told CFX ramps to and from the south and add new permanent ramps and a permanent toll site north of County Road 532 with the Point Siena Parkway mainline elevated over County Road 532. Tolls for the Point Siena Parkway Extension Connector will be collected electronically at a gantry. The toll rate and location will be determined at a future toll rate rulemaking public meeting. The existing tolling points on the Sinclair Road ramps to and from the south will remain. Now we will cover the proposed interchange modifications at I-4 State Road 429. We will provide an overview of key concept considerations used in the development of the preferred alternative and then detail how the main line connects to I-4 and State Road 429. Recently, 
FDOT District 5 constructed managed lanes in the median of I-4 and plans on extending those managed lanes through this project study area as part of the I-4 Beyond the Ultimate or BTU project. A key consideration in the development of alternatives at the I-4 State Road 429 interchange is connecting both State Road 429 and Point Santa Parkway to the planned I-4 managed lanes and the existing I-4 general lanes. To avoid the FGT and Gulfstream gas facilities south of I-4, the northbound and southbound mainline lanes are located to the south, with only the ramp connections to I-4 passing east of the facility. This configuration replaces the existing flyovers at I-4. This configuration keeps the existing connections between Sinclair Road and I-4 and includes managed lane connections, but does not include a connection between Sinclair Road and Point Santa Parkway extension connector. Next, we will look at specific movements for this configuration. These graphics will illustrate the proposed vehicle movements associated with the improvements. Point Santa Parkway and State Road 429 movements are shown in green, I-4 general lane connections are shown in blue, and I-4 managed lane connections are shown in yellow. Here are the movements and the decision points at I-4, starting with the northbound Point Santa Parkway movements. Northbound Point Santa Parkway traffic would pass over I-4 to merge onto State Road 429 northbound. Northbound Point Santa Parkway traffic desiring to access I-4 eastbound and westbound will exit to I-4 and utilize the general lanes. Northbound Point Santa Parkway traffic can also exit onto eastbound I-4 managed lanes. Southbound State Road 429 traffic would pass over I-4 and merge onto southbound Point Santa Parkway. Southbound State Road 429 traffic desiring to access I-4 eastbound and westbound would exit onto I-4 and utilize the I-4 general lanes. Southbound State Road 429 traffic can exit onto I-4 and take the westbound I-4 managed lanes. Eastbound I-4 traffic could continue eastbound on I-4, exit onto southbound Point Siena Parkway, or exit onto northbound State Road 429 via the general lane connections. Eastbound I-4 managed lane traffic could continue eastbound via the I-4 managed lane, or to northbound State Road 429 via the managed lane connection. Westbound I-4 traffic could continue westbound on I-4, exit to southbound Point Siena Parkway, or exit to northbound State Road 429 via the general lane connections. Westbound I-4 managed lane traffic can continue or exit to southbound Point Siena Parkway via the managed lane connection. Now we will cover the interchange modifications at Sinclair Road. The existing Sinclair Road ramps would remain, maintaining access between Sinclair Road and either State Road 429 northbound or I-4. The configuration does not allow access to Point Siena Parkway from Sinclair Road. The preferred alternative will connect to planned improvements to I-4 as part of the I-4 managed lanes project. These connections will be at I-4's intersection with County Road 532 on the west and at I-4's intersection with World Drive on the east. On the project's western end, the configuration along I-4 includes one additional westbound lane approaching County Road 532 compared to the approved I-4 managed lanes. The managed lanes through this portion of I-4 will be barrier separated through the interchange. At World Drive, the configuration will add a fifth westbound general lane and also includes a third eastbound lane on the collector distributor system at World Drive. Benefits of the build alternative include reduced congestion on I-4, County Road 532, and other local roadways, improved safety through crash reductions, and reduced travel times by 28% in the morning and 49% in the evening peak periods by 2050. As part of the study of the alternatives presented, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise is evaluating the potential social, natural, physical, and cultural effects of the project. The features listed are just some of the types of analysis included in this PD&E study. Avoidance or minimization of impacts to these features is a key consideration. Impacts that cannot be avoided will be mitigated. The evaluation matrix summarizes the effects evaluation results of the preferred alternative in comparison to the no-build alternative. 
The preferred alternative improves future traffic operations and safety, but requires right-of-way, wetland, surface water, floodplain, and protected species impacts. The total project cost, including construction, engineering, CEI, right-of-way, and wetland mitigation is approximately $1.7 billion, including I-4 BTU through the project area. One of the unavoidable consequences on a project such as this is the necessary relocation of families or businesses. On this project, we anticipate the relocation of one resident and zero businesses. All right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statute 339.09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. If you are required to make any type of move as a result of a Department of Transportation project, you can expect to be treated in a fair and helpful manner and in compliance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance Act. If a move is required, you will be contacted by an appraiser who will inspect your property. We encourage you to be present during the inspection and provide information about the value of your property. You may also be eligible for relocation advisory services and payment benefits. If you are being moved and you are unsatisfied with the department's determination of your eligibility for payment or the amount of that payment, you may appeal that determination. You will be promptly furnished necessary forms and notified of the procedures to be followed in making that appeal. A special word of caution, if you move before you receive notification of the relocation benefits that you might be entitled to, your benefits may be jeopardized. We encourage you to call the Turnpike Project Manager or visit the right-of-way specialists at the in-person venue if you have any questions regarding the right-of-way acquisition process. A cultural resources assessment survey was conducted for this pd &E study to identify any cultural resources and assess their eligibility for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. No archeological or historical sites eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places were identified. No significant impacts are anticipated as a result of this project. Federal protected species may be present or utilize areas within the proposed project. The project is likely to adversely impact the blue tail mole skink and the sand skink. Mitigation for unavoidable impacts to occupied sand skink habitat can be completed through the purchase of credits at an acceptable conservation mitigation bank. Florida's Turnpike Enterprise will continue coordinating with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service regarding these species. State protected species may be present or utilize areas within the proposed project, but no adverse impacts are anticipated. Florida's Turnpike Enterprise will continue coordinating with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission regarding these species. The proposed roadway and stormwater pond improvements will potentially affect an estimated 158 acres of wetlands and 26 acres of surface waters. Florida's Turnpike Enterprise will mitigate wetland and surface water impacts resulting from this project's construction to meet state and federal requirements. Final pond site locations will be determined in the design phase. A location hydraulic report was prepared for the project to identify potential 100-year floodplain encroachments resulting from the proposed improvements. Floodplain impacts will be fully compensated for, and there will be no net increases to floodplain stages as a result of this project. A contamination screening evaluation report was prepared for this project to identify contamination concerns within the study area. The results of the contamination screening identified zero high-risk sites, eight medium-risk sites, 22 low-risk sites, and three no-risk sites for the roadway and stormwater pond improvements. These sites will be further evaluated during the design phase to identify options to avoid, minimize, or mitigate contamination involvement. A noise study report was prepared for this project. Impacted locations throughout the corridor were found to be potentially feasible and reasonable for noise walls include Encore West at Reunion, Reunion at 400 Apartments, Encore East at Reunion, Reunion Village, and Toscana Condominiums. These locations are proposed for future study during design and can be viewed in the noise study report prepared for this project. For more detailed information on the proposed improvements, including potential noise wall locations, visit the display boards located on the project website and at the in-person hearing where a noise specialist will be available to answer your questions. The total project cost for the preferred alternative is approximately $1.7 billion in present-day costs. Construction, engineering, CEI, right-of-way, 
and wetland mitigation are included in this total. Design and right-of-way are funded in the tentative fiscal 2024 to 2028 FDOT work program. Construction is not yet funded. We continue to encourage public input to help us make this important decision. You can submit written comments at the project website, www.pointsianaextension.com, and you can mail or email your comments directly to the project manager, Michael Leo. Please send written comments to Florida's Turnpike Enterprise, P.O. Box 613-069, Ocoee, Florida, 34761, or via email to michael.leo at dot.state.fl.us. This information is also available on the public hearing notification and the project website. During the in-person hearing, you can also submit your written comments using the comment forms provided. Written comments must be received no later than May 12, 2023 to become part of the public hearing record. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final pd and &E document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management, which based on the MOU signed with FHWA on May 26, 2022, has approval authority on this project granting location and design concept acceptance. This project has and will continue to comply with all applicable state and federal rules and regulations. This concludes our presentation. We now offer you the opportunity to make a statement. Thank you for your interest in the Poinciana Parkway Extension Connector pd &E study from south of County Road 532 to north of the I-4 State Road 429 interchange. And thank you for taking the time to participate in this meeting. Anyone desiring to make a statement regarding the location, conceptual design, or social, economic, and environmental effects of the improvements will now have the opportunity to do so. Written statements may be presented in lieu of or in addition to oral statements. All written material received at this public hearing and sent to the Florida Department of Transportation, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise, P.O. Box 613-069, Ocoee, Florida, 34761, postmarked no later than May 12, 2023, will become part of the public record for this hearing. All written comments should be addressed to Michael Leo. Comments may also be emailed to michael.leo at dot.state.fl.us. We will now begin the public comment period. Please note that we will not respond to your comments and questions today, but will respond in writing at a later date. Those who requested to speak at registration will now be called upon. When your name is called, you will be unmuted. If the microphone icon on the GoToWebinar panel is green, you're ready to make your statement. If the microphone icon is red, you will need to click the icon once. It will then turn green and you'll be notified that you are unmuted as shown in the GoToWebinar control panel on the right. You are then ready to speak. Please state your name and address for the public hearing record. If you're representing an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. In an effort to accommodate all the speakers, we request that you take no more than three minutes to make your comment. The first speaker we are going to call on is Jackson Hurst. Uh, Mr. Hurst, you are on mute. Hi, my name is Jackson Hurst. I live at 4216 Cornell Crossing, Kennesaw, Georgia, 30144. And I approve and support the bill alternative for the Points in a Parkway Extension Connector PD and E study, primarily because the preferred bill alternative will avoid impacts to the existing Florida gas transmission line and the Southeastern Gas Pipeline. Also, the preferred bill alternative will improve connectivity to interior Polk County and Osceola County as well.
Does that conclude your remark? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hertz. Uh, the next speaker we have is Alexandre Grizzik Gordillis. The next speaker we have is Charles Santiago. Misha Santiago. Mark Bradley. Adriana Torres Chong. Ms. Torres Chong, you are on mute on your end. We've unmuted you on ours. We're still seeing that you're muted on your end. You know, yes, I, I don't have any comments, but thank you. No comments. Thank you so much. I just want to listen. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker we have is Derek Santiago. Hello, can sure? everyone hear me? Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Derek Santiago. I live at 103 Hardwood Circle, Circle in Kissimmee, Florida, 34744. I am the supply chain manager for Legacy Vacation Resort, located on 2800 North Point Siena Boulevard. And my question is, is there any effect of this um, extension connector going to do anything to Point Siena Boulevard which is north, um, one to two blocks away from Earl Bronson, 192. Um, as the traffic there is um, pretty unbearable right now with a lot of um, close calls, accidents, and there is currently no crossing for guests and children in that 20, 2800 area. So my question is, is there anything that's going to be done considering to make a crosswalk there to make it safer for pedestrians? That's all. Okay, sir. So we we appreciate the question. It, the questions will become part of the public record, um, but we're going to limit this to verbal comments only at this point. But your questions have been recorded, and we will provide a response to those questions in writing uh, following the end of the uh, public hearing, a uh, uh, public notification period. Thank you, sir. Appreciate so, you. Appreciate. Very good. The the next speaker is going to be. Uh, Brenner Machado. Odair Guidi. Yeah, no comments at all. The next speaker is Amin Zain or Zain? Jay Adams? Dorothy Reynolds? Louis Panagulius? Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Louis Penagulius. I'm the president of the Villas at Reunion Square, and that's inside of Reunion East. And uh, I've talked to many of the people who are owners and residents here, as well as people who have uh, Reunion as a second home, as most of the people do, probably 80%. Um, and there's overwhelming support for this. 
especially connecting the 429 over I-4 to Pontiana Parkway. Uh, I know there's always been traffic at rush hour because the 417 and Disney and the 429 all merge in the same point, but it's crippling at this point. You can't get in or out of reunion. Uh, almost all the hours of the day, people have to literally plan their day around if they're gonna get back in reunion or not. Uh, I'm a realtor by, by trade. I have to go sometimes into Orlando. I have to go sometimes into Tampa. And this would alleviate, uh, just, you can't, I don't wanna say you can't live in the neighborhood, but the traffic is so bad. If you spent a week in reunion, you might reconsider it uh, moving there because it's, it's crippling traffic. So we support this 200%. I would also add, I don't know if it's the FDOT's uh, jurisdiction or not, but if they can find a way to connect Celebration Boulevard to Old Lake Wilson Road, then a lot of the people going in out of reunion, whether they are residents or guests, we would alleviate a lot of traffic for locals living in this area. So um, if you could do it the way you stated it, we support it all the way. And that's all I got, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next speaker is Najib Tayera. You should be ready to speak. Yeah. I can hear you now. Would do you wish to make a comment? Okay, we're going to move on to uh, Diane and Mike Davis. It looks like we're unmuted on both ends. You should be ready to speak. Okay, that was the last of those who registered to speak. Um, does anybody else desire to speak? If so, you can raise your hand at this point and we'll unmute you. John Dryberg, you're now unmuted. Thank you. My name is John Dryberg, and my address is 7412 Gathering Court, and I also happen to be on the position of the CDD. Um, I understand you'll be needing to take some real estate from the CDD to build out some of these projects, and certainly we welcome this webinar. It's been very, very informative. Thank you for your time. The question that we would like you to perhaps address, and obviously it would be after this meeting, is the distance that you see this being built out in relation to the various parts of reunion on the eastern side and on the western side at our previous meetings it appeared as though it was going to be fairly close and in fact for some of the homes extraordinarily close one you know we certainly would like to make sure that we aren't going to be having people's lives negatively impacted by the fact that we decided to move it too close towards reunion and not centering it more, perhaps a little bit closer to celebration. And we'd like you to address that, and obviously not here, but in your comments after the meeting. Thank you, sir. Amin Zine, you're now unmuted. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity. Uh, I wanted to thank you for the presentation that was uh, concise and uh, shed a lot of lights on the project. Um, I wanted to second the motion and the comments that were just made about the distance of the road, uh, the projected road from uh, the homes at uh, Reunion. Um, and if it's possible, to move it slightly away from the existing homes into the open land. Um, I've also had uh, I've sent an email and uh, I got a response that was uh, satisfactory. So thank you. And uh, the other issue is the uh, noise reduction wall. I saw in your presentation that you are uh, 
uh, proposing those walls and I uh, highly support them uh, because they will definitely play a positive impact in reducing the noise. Um, this project seems to be uh, very fruitful uh, and I do support it and I do think it will uh, relieve a lot of the congestion in the area. Uh, thank you again for this uh, presentation and uh, looking forward to hearing uh, some more information in the future. That will conclude my comment. Thank you very much. Richard Cabot, you are now muted. Mr. Cabot, you're muted on your end. I'm okay now? No. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I live at 200 Burma Street in Reunion, Encore. Um, concerns are that these roads may impact the value of the homes in uh, Encore Reunion Resort. And uh, is there any plan to reimburse the homeowners in the event that that were to happen? That is my first question. My second question along the lines, the last gentleman is if they do this, uh, a noise reduction wall certainly would be uh, necessary to help keep the noise down from Encore Reunion East, or Encore Reunion. Thank you. Yes, sir. And like I said earlier, we, we uh, took that question, we have it, it's recorded and we will provide a response uh, at a later date. Miguel Torres Diaz, you are now unmuted. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? We can hear you fine, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Miguel Torres. I am a resident in 7321 Tideville Place in Celebration, Florida. Um, we obviously uh, recognize the importance of this project and uh, we want to, I want to support it as uh, it is being presented. We believe that the, uh, the evaluation of the crash conditions and the congestion issues are all critical factors that uh, need to be the driver of these improvements. And uh, as a resident of a nearby you know, area, we know that we're all gonna have some impacts, but at the end of the day, uh, it's gonna improve the livelihood of uh, our communities and improve the traffic that we uh, unfortunately have to deal with every day. And it's eating away uh, part of our you know, time with our families and, and everything that we want to do. So uh, on, on my part, I, I support the project and uh, look forward to future, I would say more detailed information pertaining about the uh, the exits and the, the way the overlaps are going to be running uh, in the exchange and understand clearly uh, where those limits are going to be for, for the benefit of the community and, and the community where I live in celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are no more hands up. Is there anybody else who desires to speak? If so, please raise your hand at this time. Okay, seeing none. The verbatim trans transcript of this hearing's oral proceedings, together with all written materials received as part of the public hearing record and all studies, displays, and informational materials provided at the hearing will, be part, will become part of the project decision-making process and will be available at the district office for public review upon request. The public comment period will remain open for this public hearing through May 12th, 2023. If you provided an email address at registration, you will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording of today's proceedings. The recording link will be available, um, will also be available on our project website. When you exit the webinar, you will receive a brief survey. Your participation will help us for future public hearings. Thank you for attending this hearing and for providing your input into this project. The time is now 6.15. I hereby officially close this public hearing for the Point Siena Parkway extension connector from County Road 532 to north of the I-4429 Interchange PD&E study. Thank you again and have a good evening.